Hey guys, Curtis Alexander. Let's talk about blood pressure remedies. Now, before we get into things that you could possibly do, it's really important that you understand what's actually going on in your body because to me, there's some conflicting advice out there about how to deal with it. So first of all, when, when you have high blood pressure, there's a couple things going on. Number one, you're seeing an increase in aldosterone, which is a hormone uh, that your body kicks out in response to angiotensin. And so there's this pathway. So aldosterone goes up. The second thing that will happen from angiotensin is that you're going to see increases in ADH. ADH is antidiuretic hormone. So it gets a little confusing, but the end result of these two combined things is that your body's going to hold on to sodium. That's its natural response to these things increasing. And here's the other thing. It's also, you're going to lose potassium. Now, there's a lot of talk about sodium and blood pressure, very little talk about potassium, but the end result is blood volume goes up as well as blood pressure. So are there any things that you can do naturally to, to help minimize this process? Uh, so let's talk about that. First of all, you know, you're probably going to roll your eyes, but when the, the stress response, really at the heart of it, this whole thing is a stress response because we know for example, our corticosteroids like cortisol, these things that are stress hormones, part of the reaction to those hormones increasing is to increase blood pressure. It is a natural, it's a needed thing, but in this case, it's gotten a little out of hand. So some of these things we can do to relax and de-stress are very important, whether that's meditation, whether that's your lifestyle, and whether that's the foods that you're putting in your body, how you're eating, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, another great one is walking. Um, I'm not a big fan of jogging for a number of different reasons. If that's your bag, then feel free to do it. But a daily walk has been shown to decrease blood pressure and help in that regard. You don't have to get carried away. You can start out with a short uh, half hour walk, but it has been shown to be beneficial. Now let's start talking about nutrients. Now I could call it diet. I could call it all these things, but the idea is the thing driving this whole process is a stress response. If you're eating in a way that's promoting stress and I'm going to get blowback for this, but low carb diets, uh, keto carnivore, those can produce a stress response. Now, People will come out and say, well, low carb has been shown to decrease blood pressure. And that is true to a point um, because those, the, the insulin response does have something to do with this process. So I'm not denying that. However, done long term, we do see an increase in stress hormones. So um, I need a balance of nutrients. But the biggest thing you want to do is making sure that you're getting mineral rich nutrients so we can drive some of these enzymatic processes. The other thing that comes up is, okay, doctor said restrict salt. Is that helpful? It can be helpful to a point. First of all, the whole salt restriction thing was done on a pretty poorly designed study decades ago and it kind of people glommed onto it and it's all about restricting salt. Restricting salt will only take you so far again, we have to come back to potassium, okay? Because you're losing potassium and you're retaining sodium. So we always think eat less sodium, but what about our potassium? So what I like to do is think about ratios. I would recommend, talk to your doctor, obviously, but like a three to one or maybe a four to one potassium to sodium ratio, kind of shoot for that that from a dietary perspective is gonna help the blood pressure, as well as getting these mineral rich foods, the organ meats, the eggs, the um, ripe fruits, good saturated fats, those things. Okay, now what about supplements? I recommend these last because I haven't found them to be overly helpful. Um, they're kind of a, a very small arrow in a big quiver, but they could potentially add on to it. Some of our biggest ones would be garlic has shown some evidence, cod liver oil, although I'm not a big fan due to the um, 
the seed oil, the, a lot of them can become rancid. So um, I'm not as big a fan of taking it, but however, it has shown some evidence. Uh, bergamot, I've done a video on bergamot uh, with cholesterol levels, and uh, it has shown um, some blood pressure effects too. And also salary seed is another one that could potentially be taken. I think I've done some videos on that. There are other ones, but I want to just kind of stick with the basics. Again, supplements are not my first go-to. Uh, it really is when it comes to remedies, your nutrients, stress levels, and getting some movement are going to be big. So I would focus on those and making sure you understand. Part of the reason why blood pressure medications address this um, is because they want you to get rid of water like diuretics or we're going to block angiotensin which starts this whole process but those still don't address your root causes these will address your root causes so focus on those uh, let me know in the comments guys uh, any other questions that you have i do my best to answer them i do read all of them i do my best to answer and hope this was helpful i'll see you in the next one thank you